Come along with me for some kitchen motivation today from a grocery haul to my menu plan and then I'm doing a declutter of the kitchen and I have a great low carb, oh so comforting recipe for you. I had groceries delivered this morning and there were no substitutions. For meats, I got a family pack of chicken thighs, a bag of shrimp, two packages of blade steaks, which I find are very versatile for just about anything, 99% fat-free ground turkey, two packages of family-sized chicken breasts. For produce, I have two red bell peppers, two bunches of scallions, two bags of broccoli crowns, then a box of spring mix, lettuce, kiwis, bananas, celery, carrot sticks, and then for frozen vegetables, I got these two bags of peas to kind of stock up. Then we got some cornstarch, black pepper, sugar-free peanut butter, tamari to replace soy sauce, and two cans of black beans, a jar of dill pickles, and four cans of diced tomatoes, as well as two bags of dairy-free chocolate chips. I also needed small and large freezer bags. I got one package of toilet paper for the upstairs bathroom and one for the downstairs. And then some reduced fat string cheese, butter, decaf K-cups, as well as caramel K-cups. All in total, it came to $254.98. Honestly, still pinching myself that there were absolutely no substitutions. So between what I have in the house and what I just showed you, we'll be doing pork chops and tomato sauce with peas and potatoes, steak, butternut squash that I had from Thanksgiving because I bought two, and rice. Then we'll do one night of takeout. Indian food, which is butter chicken, broccoli, and rice chicken and shrimp gumbo, which you'll see that recipe at the end of this video, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. Beef stew and biscuits, and I will probably record that. Someone asked how to make beef stew. Actually, I will record that, and you'll see that in a later video. And then white chicken chili and Tostitos. I do have white chicken chili on one of my earlier videos, very early. So I might not do these in the order I have them written in, but it does really help me to have them written down. And then if we need to switch up what night, what happens, then that's a lot easier. And by the way, did you notice I took my manicure off? Except for right there, I couldn't get it off. This is the cabinet in the corner underneath my countertop. And as you can see, it's quite a mess. I have a lot of stuff under there and it's super deep. So it is very hard to get the things that I want when I want them. And I just really felt like I needed to clean it out. Just for an example, here's the caps <laughs> from my spray oil. There were four under there and I don't even have any spray oil right now. So it's been a big problem. And so this container right here is what I usually have my oil and vinegars in. And there was some oil that had got leaked there. And so it was a mess, but I am gonna actually use a smaller container. I'm not gonna use this one anymore. I also had a plastic shoebox under under there and that really is enough to suffice for all of my oils and vinegars right now. I used to have a Lazy Susan with my old cabinetry and that thing was always off center. It always needed to be repaired and granted they were older cabinets because they were original to the house but I swore when I replaced my cabinets I wasn't going to do the Lazy Susan. It was one of those ones that had a pole down the middle so it was attached. I think if the Lazy Susan could come out or if the cabinet drawer could come out, if something could come out toward me, I wouldn't mind it so much and I could see having a turntable would be easier than what I got going on right now. I mean, look, there's just stuff that's, it's cruddy, it's dirty. I just haven't been keeping a good enough track of that. And one of the reasons it's just very awkward to get under there. Someone in the comments recently inquired as to why I have my pans under the stairs, and this is really why. This would be the cabinet where they would most likely, most easily go. It's really the only one that is big enough to hold all of my pans and frying pans. But here I am using a mop to get out the last of what's in there. It's just a very awkward space for me, and so it's not where I want to be climbing in <laughs> every single day, if that makes sense. So now I've taken everything out of that cabinet, and there it is on the island in all 
all of its beauty. You can see I have a lot of things that would have stored things in my pantry. And so I am going to, not in this video, but very soon in the next couple, you'll see me actually use these pantry things. I think I've gotten lazy of just putting everything in its box that it came in. So here is underneath, I had liners and they're just all over the place. There's crumbs on them. This hasn't been cleaned out in quite a bit of time. And then this placemat on the left, I'm not quite sure why I even had that in there still. That's not going to be going back in. So I get my Dyson out and I put on an attachment to get the worst of the crumbs. But I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to take these out and clean them. But as it turned out, I needed to do both. So I'm getting the worst of it with the vacuum and then I'll take them out and wipe them down as well. So I'm taking them out and then I'm going to be using a microfiber cloth. I just wet it with water. I didn't really need a cleaner and I'm just wiping it. And then this placemat, one of the reasons it didn't go back in is I realized it had like kids paint on it. It used to be what my daughters would use when they would do their painting projects when they were into crafts. So you know it's been a while because my youngest is 16 years old and they're not using children's paint <laughs> a whole lot. It would just, the whole thing is a mystery to me because my cabinets aren't that old. So I don't even know, but I'm getting my line wiped up and I didn't even need that placemat either. So the big challenge here is just making sure the bottom is dry on each one so I'm not putting any moisture on my cabinets because I didn't pay a lot for these cabinets, let's just face it. So water is a big enemy of making the finish bubble. So now I can just get the liners back in and then consider what's going back in this cabinet. Whenever I organize a space now, this is recent, a recent lesson is I think, what is my vision for this space? I'm not going to store things somewhere just because they need to be stored. They have to have a purpose and that purpose is why they are even in that space. So the oils and the vinegars go in first. I want them to be the easiest to reach. Then the mixer, we do use the mixer, especially in the winter time. Yvonne loves to bake and so she will be using that. And then I also have my food processor and you're gonna see me, I get in a fight with the food processor because I was gonna put it all together and store it that way but I realized quickly that it was too tall to go in there but then I couldn't get that dumb thing off and I had to call for help. I wanna throw it in the trash right now. Hey, Mike, Chris is having way too much fun. Over there. What's wrong? I can't get this thing off because it hates me. You can't get it off? Because it hates me. Okay, I'm going to take this out first. Why? Oh. Because it has a hook here that it uses to tell whether it's on or off. Oh my word, I hate it. I hate that thing. Okay, that wasn't one of my better moments, but I thought you're gonna get the real thing. Like this does stuff doesn't all go smoothly for me. And the girls were over at the table doing their schoolwork and they were having a good giggle over me, completely helpless to that food processor. But anyway, now I'm going to the blender and I'm getting these things wiped off because sometimes when we're using them, and I'll say we, even though sometimes I don't think it's me, but sometimes when we're using these things, they're not getting wiped off properly. So I'm making sure that there's no foodstuffs or tomato sauces or anything on this before I get it put away. But I do use the blender quite often. It's just one of those other things. So I'm making sure that everything that goes in there is being used. The rice cooker went in there. You know, I will show you the full deal. And then also what was in there was one of my produce keepers. And let me just say, I have all these great things, but I haven't been using them the way that I should. So I really want to get the food stuff under control and I'm just making sure that this all fits and then I can put that cabinet back together again. And one of the problems is when I switched my eating plan and wasn't having to prepare as much food for myself, then I kind of fell down on keeping the food organized, but I really feel like you save a lot of money when you can be very intentional about, or at least I do, when I can be super intentional about how food is stored and then everybody can see what they have. Here is the reveal of how I want that cabinet. These are all the tools and things that we actually use consistently. And even though there's empty spaces, I'm liking it. And this is the stuff that is being evicted from the space. It's use it or lose it. 
This cabinet also has a problem. Do you see those lids on that middle shelf? So I really want this cleaned up. I don't believe we need all these lids. They came with our pots and pans when we got the new Kizanar, is it called? I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I got those new pans and those lids came with it. But I have lids the same size with my old pans and these lids tend to heat up and you have to be careful, whereas my old lids don't heat up at all. And so I like to use those a lot better because I don't have to worry about grabbing the handle. So I'm just getting this cabinet neatened up. I love this cabinet because it's loose. It doesn't have a lot of stuff. It's basically, you know, those pans that you're cooking in for casseroles and my batter bowls. And then here is where my other pan lids live. And I don't really want to have two lid racks. So this was a toy of my cats that they never use. It's one of those ones where you put your little nose in to get the food out. They are not interested. And then I'm getting rid of that Rubbermaid. And then this one too, the two rounded ones. I'm just kind of doing this a little bit quietly. We never use it. No one's going to miss it. But if I were to ask, should I get rid of it? I'm pretty sure the answer would have been no. That's all going aside to be donated and then I'm just kind of organizing these pantry pieces as best I can. I'm going to be using them. I was seeing if they fit in that corner cabinet but in the end I decided no they're definitely not going back in. I'm going to organize my pantry in the next few days and then if I don't use them they're definitely going to be leaving the house. Now I'm getting out all of these other lids and I'm going to be getting the pans out from under the stairs. I want to just get all of my pots and pans out that vase is going to be going in the basement with my box of vases for the spring but I want all the pots and pans out and just to make sure I have a lid for each size of frying pan and pan that I own. Of course, there's Leo because he detected that there was something going on in, on the island uh, with a camera and he was not invited. So he had to come out and see what I was doing. But this reminds me of those little preschool workbooks I used to get my kids. You could imagine having to draw a line from the size lid to the right pan. <laughs> what my plan is for these lids. So the ones I'm trying, I found I did have one for every size pan I had without using the newer lids that I really don't like. I don't like them because you can't see through them and I don't like them because they heat up and you have to use a pot holder to take the lid off the pan. And so what I'm going to do with the newer lids is I'm pretty sure it would be an unpopular decision to get rid of them. I'm going to put them in a box. I saw this idea. It's not my idea. I think it was the minimal mom having an interview with a man named Josh who has a very successful minimalism YouTube channel. I think he's a counselor maybe. Either way, he suggested you put the stuff in a box. On the outside of the box is a detailed list of what is inside the box and a date. Then I'm going to pick a future date and then if I go back to that box and it's not been used, I can get rid of them. So these were two other lids I had that I no longer need. I had duplicates of the same size. These are the ones that are going to get packed in a small cardboard box with the inventory list on the outside. And now I'm just so much happier that my casserole dishes, I got my batter bowls in there and also my food scale. Now it's nice and neat again without those ugly lids in there. And then this is where my real lids go. Now this was after a day of using them and doing dishes. So some are missing. They're in the dishwasher, but you get the general idea. And then I thought you might like to see a tour of the rest of my cabinets. So I have my hot plate and the sushi stuff up there in the box and then spices and such. Here at the top is our tea and then coffee stuff, coffee mugs down at the bottom. 
And then in this one, those are our waffle iron and then some of the dishes that we use when baking. I got to get that teacup and saucer out of there. And then I also have my little blender in there for lack of a better place to put it that I use for my shakes each day. You've seen this cabinet. The glasses and cups are mostly in the dishwasher right now. That's why it looks so empty. This is under the sink and what I did in a previous video where I got this all organized is still working really well and I like it a lot. Now this could use a little help. I'm not quite sure how many microfiber cloths I really should be keeping. Probably have more scrubbies in there that I need. So that is all up and coming. And then this is where we keep our leftovers. You know, those are the containers rather. And then water bottles. And that could use a declutter as well. And then this, of course, is the corner cabinet that we just did. And as the lighting improves, you can see again what is in there. And then to the left of that one, this is the drawer where I keep tools that I want to be able to grab quickly when I am cooking. And then you'll see in the island, I have a bigger drawer for the overflow. And then this is where my pot holders go, as well as things like cookie sheets, broiler pans, and my cooling rack. And then we also have the drawers to the left of the stove. So you can see what is in here, all of my cutting boards. And we use quite a few at a time because sometimes we all cook together. This is a bit of a mess. <laughs> it is all of our kitchen tools. We definitely use all this stuff. I've decluttered it many times. I could probably stand to do it again. And then the mixing bowls are here and the sifter and a few little tools and then this was to a blender that is broken i got rid of the blender so now i can get rid of that protective shield don't need that anymore and then over here this is under our island i keep spare paper towels any cooking stones our um roaster as well as crock pot so it's not perfect i'd love to have another shelf in there this is my silverware drawer i love these dollar store containers i got and then this is where the overflow of the kitchen tools are. I got those dividers, I think at TJ Maxx. Tonight I made a new low carb recipe to me and it was absolutely amazing. It's a chicken and shrimp gumbo, total comfort food. It called for three quarters of a pound of cooked shrimp and so I'm just getting my scale ready. What I usually do is I cover it with saran wrap so that it stays nice and clean and I'm getting the shrimp put down there until I have three quarters of a pound. Next, I'm cutting up one pound of boneless chicken thighs. I really love shrimp and I love chicken thighs, so already I know this is going to be a great recipe. And as a matter of fact, my family isn't often too interested in the whole low carb thing, but this smelled so good, everybody wanted to try it. So next time I'll be making a big batch. Now it's time to chop up my vegetables. So I am chopping two celery stalks. What I love about video <laughs> is I can speed the video up so it looks like I actually have half decent cutting skills which I really don't I don't do this correctly at all but as long as you get it cut up that's all that matters right I'm also cutting up one small scallion and then also one red bell pepper Lastly, I'm chopping up one and a half cups of mushrooms. If you don't like mushrooms, you can substitute in okra or green beans. This recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I cannot have cayenne pepper, so I'm substituting in red pepper flakes. You need one clove of garlic, one and a half cups of diced tomatoes, a quarter teaspoon of each pepper and salt, a quarter teaspoon of thyme, and one small bay leaf. No rice used here, so in place of that, it's two cups of frozen rice cauliflower, and then you also need two cups of water. Officially, you have all your ingredients, and we're ready to start cooking. The recipe calls for one tablespoon of canola oil. I prefer avocado oil, so that's what I'm using here, and I'm going to let it get heated up a little bit. 
On my oven, it works out to use medium high when I am sauteing vegetables. Now the directions say to add the garlic, scallions, celery, and bell pepper and cook till translucent. My mushrooms were in there too. <laughs> and that's because I'm not really good at following directions, but it was just fine. I just had all the vegetables I had chopped up on one plate and in it went. And then I just keep it cooking and stirring until the red bell pepper and the celery was translucent. Once that happens, I'm adding the water, the tomatoes, the salt and pepper, the thyme, the bay leaf, the cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes, and I'm gonna simmer it all for 15 minutes. So basically, everything is in the pot except for the chicken and the shrimp and the cauliflower. And if you follow directions, the mushrooms. <laughs> When your 15 minutes is up, add the boneless chicken thighs and let that cook for 10 minutes. Next, add all of the shrimp as well as the cauliflower and you only need to simmer this for three minutes. Now, because I had said frozen cauliflower, let me just say that I usually sprinkle a little water on top and zap it in the microwave for two minutes so that it's heated up and it's not frozen or you could leave it in the pan a little bit longer. Remember, I also used cooked shrimp. If my shrimp wasn't cooked, I would have put it in with the chicken thighs at the same time time so that it would cook through. So really now, because my shrimp's already cooked, my cauliflower's cooked, I am just heating through. And you know, this is such a great warming recipe. This would be a great holiday recipe. So consider that when you're looking for something low carb to have on Christmas. I am a health coach and so I know some of my clients are here. So if you're on the same health plan as me, that's one lean, three greens, one healthy fat, and two condiments. If you need information about the plan I'm on, it's in the description box. Chicken. Oh, this is the gumbo? Is this what we're having for dinner? No, you're having a stir fry. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. Okay, I'm gonna try some. No, I didn't try any. I tried some. It's just really hot. Oh. Spicy or just. Pica y caliente. Pica y caliente. That's, That's good. So I like that. God loves you, and I love you too, and I can't wait to see you next time.